All right, what's going on, everybody? So this is my review for the Abramedia G7573 Live Gamer 4K HDR Internal Capture Card, long ass title. So this is gonna be a pretty comprehensive review. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know, and also I'm gonna provide links to all that information in the description if you want to reference it. So just a little bit of background before I get into the details of this card. So I was in the market for a new capture card. I pre previously had the Elgato HD60S and the natural upgrade from the HD60S which could capture 1080p60 was to jump to a 4K card. And the previously before this card released, which was recently the only other card, consumer level card on the market for recording games was by the industry leading Elgato and they released their 4K card. But I was a little bit hesitant to buy the uh, Elgato 4K card because one, the price tag, which is $400, and two, most console games aren't even reaching 4K60. And on PC, there's plenty of free programs that capture 4K60 gameplay uh, at an amazing quality. So there's not really any need to have a 4K card uh, to capture uh, gameplay from the PC, but rather for future-proofing what may come on the console end of things. Quick disclaimer before I move on, the gameplay footage that you will see in this video are captured by the Aver Media card, but this video is not rendered in 4K HDR. So the videos you, you will see are not representative of the quality that the card actually outputs. If you want to see that, I have uploaded several 4K HDR quality test videos on my channel on several different games. I will put the link to those in the description or you could just check my channel videos and I'll put them at the end of this video in annotations. So let's get into the review and talk about the technical uh, and the specifications of this car. So I've been on YouTube way too long, about 10 years. So I've been through several capture cards. I started out with the Dazzle. Some of you had no idea what a Dazzle is. That's way before your time. That was like capture card that recorded in SD. Yes, SD. I've had the Hapog, uh, the, uh, the early Elgato, so all of that. So I've had experience with capture cards. But um, so the Aver Media Live Gamer 4K card, uh, some of his highlights, 4K 60 HDR. Now I mentioned the Elgato earlier, of course. The main thing that the uh, Aver Media card can do that the Elgato 4K cannot do that they boast is HDR. This card can capture HDR. And of course, if you're viewing HDR, you have to have the right device like a Samsung or a Samsung 8, I believe, or above, or an iPhone X to uh, actually view HDR. Or you can obviously watch um, HDR, the HDR video on a 4K TV on YouTube. So like I said, it can capture 4K 60 HDR. It can capture up to uh, 240 uh, FPS, which you would probably only need if you're recording um, PC gameplay because no console game is really reaching that. Um, it has ultra low latency, of course, uh, with the preview screen when you're uh, recording, you can see what you're actually recording in real time and also uh, when you're live streaming. Um, it has RGB lighting for all of you gold chain gamers who enjoy, you know, the colors and the spectacles and the, you know, the visual presentation of lighting up your rig. So that's always good. So getting a little bit more into the technical details. So this card is obviously internal. So it has to go into a PCIe 4 slot on your motherboard. My motherboard actually didn't have any uh, four slots available, but it had 16 and anything less than 16, it you know can still go in that slot. Um, the max, so the input, let's talk about the input and output. Um, this is passed through through HDMI 2.0. So the max pass through resolution um, is 2160 uh, at 60 frames HDR, 1440p at 144 and 1080p at 240. Now for anybody who doesn't understand exactly what pass through is, I'll simply explain it. Um, pretty much pass through is the, uh, the signal of the resolution and the frame rate that will be passed to an output on your monitor or TV. And the reason why they state that is because there's a difference between max pass through and max capture. Because some cards have the ability, their max capture they can do is at 1080p 60, but they will still output a 4K 60 resolution to your monitor or TV. So this card can do both. So moving on to the max capture, as you can see on the screen, um, the max capture resolution, it can record it at 4K uh, 60 HDR. Um, pretty much the max pass through and the max capture is the same um, on this card. So it pretty much supports anything. 
uh, anything. It also supports all these weird and obscure resolutions that nobody uh, should be viewing at rec and recording at uh, in 2018, such as 480p, 576p, uh, even 720p. You know, I consider that a little bit un unacceptable in 2018. But you know, if you have, let's say, a you know Nintendo Switch, 480p uh, might still be a viable resolution for you. Recording format is MP4, but I'm going to get a little bit uh, more into the recording format and the profiles when I actually move on to the Avermedia software. Uh, what's in the box? The Obviously, the Live Gamer 4K card, uh, the HDMI 2.0 cable, the Quick Guide, and a product key to CyberLink Power Director 15. So I'm actually going to talk about editing software a little bit later, which is a very important detail that everybody needs to know, because if you want to uh, edit these 4K HDR videos, not any uh, editing software can do it. So I'm going to give you all the details on that a little bit later. So I'm just going to touch on installation really briefly because there's not really that much to say about it. It's extremely simple. All you have to do is go in your rig, uh, put, the, put the card in a PCIe slot, and then download the Avermedia software. It's not going to work unless you install the software first. These are just some pictures of the card in my rig, and please don't comment about my cable management. It normally does not look like this. I promise you I fixed everything back afterwards. All right, so now we're moving on to talk about the Avermedia RE Central 4 uh, recording software for the card. So it has a pretty simple interface. It's pretty straightforward, not too complex, easy to understand. So pretty much this is the main screen that it'll take you to. I got uh, Detroit Become Human uh, running in the background. Uh, so at the bottom left, you'll see here, this is the, you know, this is pretty much your recording settings. Uh, you can hit this you hit this button you can save and make different profiles by hit, hitting the plus uh, You hit this it'll pretty much uh, tell you exactly the uh, specifications of of the uh, profile that you have selected Hit this if you want to edit the profile uh, You know you can name name the profile here uh, choose your codec is pretty much only between uh, you know the the NVIDIA codec and the uh, H.264. Um, you know, you pretty much, you really don't have to make many changes to this. Uh, you can choose your resolution you want to record at. And I apologize if you hear any background noise. I'll try to get rid of it but on uh, after I edit this video. But if you hear background noise, that's my PS4 trying to take off into outer space. I guess Detroit Become Human's uh, main screen is too much for it to handle. But yeah, as I said, the, you can set the frame rate. Uh, the the bit rate right here is so high because you know I have the uh, the resolution at 4K. The higher the resolution, the higher the bit rate needs to be to output that quality. Obviously, if I put this down to uh, 1080p, um, then you know you don't need that high of a bit rate. If I hit a, usually you know that would just change by by default if you select um, one of the profiles. That are uh, 1080, that are 1080p instead of 4K. Keyframe you can keep that at two. Uh, you know the bit rate, the audio bit rate is pretty much maxed out. So yeah, that's pretty much it for um, you know changing your record recording settings. You can delete profiles. Uh, right here, this is for streaming. So I have tried out, I have pretty much tested out streaming with this software it, it works pretty well it's pretty good but if you use a third party uh software such as obs i recommend you continue to do that because you know it's still obs and programs like that uh has um some features that this probably doesn't have you can do oh you can still do overlays with this um you know and pick your your quality your bit rate and everything like that but you'll probably still still want to stick with uh obs now this is for, uh, you can actually do multi-streaming. You can stream to different um, platforms uh, from this software, which a lot of softwares actually don't allow you to do. Uh, usually you have to go to, like, uh, I use Restream, right? I go to Restream.com and I sign in. I, I select everywhere I want my stream to go, like it'd be YouTube and Twitch. So this actually uh, allows you to do that pretty much. And you could just log into your account and do it from straight from here. All right, so here you can. Uh, 
this is the external. Uh, you can mute the external audio. Uh, this is just muting the um, the audio in general. Now this is now pretty much this button is to mute the the preview sound. So if I unmute this, I'll actually hear her coming out of my uh, coming out of my sound bar. These are to actually mute the sound um, of the recording. So you don't want to do this. You don't want to mute these, or you're gonna com you're gonna mute the sound of a uh, of the um, of the recording. You know your output. You don't want to do that. This is the mixer, the audio mixer settings. Uh, you know you don't really need to uh, mess with this too much unless there's something specific you're trying to do. Uh, but obviously it makes it it lays it out pretty well. This is the you know external audio. Uh, you know the playback settings. You know that. This is my sound bar that um, it'll go through and everything like that. So it's it's pretty straightforward. The interface is is not too complex. Uh, one thing you want to make sure you do uh, if you want to record it HDR is have the HDR button pushed. You know, because if you forget to do that, obviously there's not going to be any any HDR. That's your record button. Um, that's your snapshot button. The snapshot uh, does it takes amazing screenshots. Of course, it takes the screenshots in the resolution that you are currently at. Um, as far as some other settings, uh, if we hit this gear right here, so general, the, the general tab, you can select your language, where you want your files to be saved to, uh, if you want to enable VSync, I don't have VSync enabled because I have, you know, I have a G-Sync monitor, um, you know, some button shortcuts, uh, to connect your social media accounts, um, your profile management, multi mode or single mode. Of course, multi mode was you know streaming uh, to different um, platforms, and that it, it gives you uh, capabilities to do a few different things. Like I said, I'm not going to get into everything. Further detail of everything you can do is in is in the description. Um, I'm pre I pretty much put the manual and all the specifications down. Uh, in the and the in the user guide in the description if you want to read about that uh, your software version um, and it of course tells you the capture device you're using because there's several different uh, Aver media uh, game capture devices that they've uh, released uh, recently so um, y'all can check the, those out if you're interested in another uh, Aver media card almost forgot to mention when you're in the menu and the settings menu and you click on the card uh, it takes you to a few different other options, such as uh, turning HDCP on or off, uh, the lighting lighting settings, such as uh, you know when it's turned off, um, the device doesn't have any lighting, um, and also you know the mode of lighting that you want your card uh, to show. There's a few different settings, and you know you could change the frequency, you know to from slow to the fastest setting. So you know you can switch up how your lighting works in your rig. And this is pretty much where um, any type of anything you record or if you take a snapshot of anything would go. Like, for example, uh, let me try to uh, go take a screenshot if it would load up. It's taking a second. Okay. I'll take that screenshot and uh, it should appear here and I can just select that and hit share. And uh, I can share it to Twitter if I want. So this program is pretty straightforward. It's it's pretty cool. It works very well. I've had zero problems with this with this software. It's it's it runs very smooth. I've had pretty much uh, no no issues. Once in a while, I have encountered that uh, a video I recorded might have uh, gotten corrupted, um, but that's only happened once. And I've done a lot of recordings. So for the most part, this. This program runs extremely smoothly. All right, so just a few more things I want to touch on before I conclude my review. Uh, and those two things I want to touch on are live streaming and editing, which I mentioned earlier is very important. So first with live streaming. Live streaming is extremely simple with the Aver Media card. You know, if you use a third-party uh, program like I do, I use OBS Streamlabs. Just like anything else, you go to Add Source, Video Capture Device, Add Source, my Aver Media is already selected, of course, and it's that simple. 
and the card works flawlessly. The quality is amazing. Let me get into the quality in just a second. But one thing I didn't have to do uh, that I had to do with some other cards is sync up my, you know, my voice, the, the gameplay sound and everything like that. Everything was already synced up. It was, you know, no latency issues, no lag issues. I didn't have to add a delay or anything like that. Not only that, I have to say that even though live stream quality does depend on what you put your bit rate at and what resolution you stream at and everything like that and there's all these all these factors i have to say that this card live streams quality is amazing because as i said i was using the hd elgato hd 60 prior to this and that live stream quality was really good but this live stream quality is so good it om it almost looks like i'm just doing a local recording and uploading the video right because when you live stream, you know, you're losing some quality there. When you up when you're just doing a, a recording, you know, that's that's you're saving all that quality. But my live streams have looked like local recordings, and people who have seen my live streams have watched that. And you can even go check out for yourself all the recent live streams that I've done, not piece not on PC. Um, I've been using this card and they look phenomenal. So this card just, you know, really, really helps with that. It just just, you know, I don't get any pixelation, anything like that, no lag. The My live streaming experience with this card has just been a 10 out of 10. It's been top notch, no issues, no problems, nothing. Only problem that I've had has been like OBS related or something like that because of their updates. Maybe the, the, the PC game or something I've been playing. It has not been the card whatsoever. So as far as live streaming goes, the card is absolutely great all right so this is the last thing i want to talk about video editing software which i mentioned is very important and the reason it's very important is because not every video editing software allows you to uh, view edit or render 4k hdr videos actually i've only found one software and i've used a lot of software i've done a lot of research on this um, i've only found one program that allows you to view edit and render 4K HDR videos, and that is uh, Adobe Premiere. So as you can see, I have Sony Vegas um, Pro 15 open, right? So these two are technically the same videos. I have two Vegas windows open. So this is um, an Uncharted 4 video uh, in 1080p. This is the video, this is the same video in 4K. So this is the raw recorded file. This over here on the left is the Uncharted video um, transcoded to 1080p in, in handbrake. So I just converted the video to 1080p. So it shows up here, but as you can see on my timeline, the video won't even show up in the preview. It may render. I'm not even, I'm not even completely sure. So it may render, but what really use is there to render, uh, if you can't even edit the video, right? And it'll allow you to render in up to 4K, but according to my research, there is no uh, setting to render HDR in Sony Vegas. You can render 4K, but not HDR, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and close Sony Vegas, and I've tried different programs. The Like I said, the best uh, video, I've the best program I've come up with that is capable of doing all the things you need is Adobe Premiere. So I'm just going to uh, open the program and show you how I, you know, put in the, I can put in a 4K video, it'll show up, it'll look great. And um, what I'm also going to do is a separate video on how to render in HDR. Because generally HDR, I guess you can say it's rel still somewhat relatively new. It's not the most, an HDR TV is not necessarily in every household yet or most households. I don't even think 4K TVs are in every ho most households yet. So definitely not 4K HDR. So it only makes sense that there, there's not the most... There's, I only found one video on YouTube on how to render in HDR. One, right? So, yeah, that's why I had to do so much research and figure this stuff out on my own. So I'm just going to, right now I'm going to drag um, that same HDR, 4K HDR Uncharted video that wouldn't show up in Sony Vegas. And I'm going to drag it over here and you're going to see it just very easily pop up on the timeline. And there it goes. It looks great. When you saw it on the other on the other on the other Sony Vegas, it even looked kind of washed out. So Adobe is the Adobe Premiere is the best program for this. Okay, I, this is Adobe Premiere uh, 2018. So here's another detail. 
um, uh, the the card, the Aver Media card, comes with uh, CyberLink Power Director 15. But here's the thing, and it tells you this in the asterisk on the data sheet. It tells you that program can uh, can um, it's it's 4K video video editing software, but it doesn't say 4K HDR video editing software. Okay. Because what, from what I found, you cannot render in HDR with that program. Maybe there's something that I couldn't figure out that is entirely possible. All I'm saying is the only program I found that you can rent, that you can uh, edit and render 4K HDR videos is is Adobe Premiere. I even upgraded to CyberLink Power Director 16, I believe it is, which I had to pay for um, because apparent because I was looking at. The details of the program and it was it was pretty much saying it could do the stuff that 15 couldn't and it still could not render in HDR according to my findings so this is why I'm telling you this is why I said it's very important because I don't want people to get this card and you know you don't have the right program to uh, to uh, render HDR in and edit and everything like that okay so that's the main thing you need to know so my conclusion on the Aver Media Live Gamer 4K is this card is absolutely amazing. It's it's great hardware. Uh, the software runs smoothly, um, easily integrated into into live streams. Uh, it's it's a hundred dollars cheaper than the Elgato, and it's technically capable of doing more. So I think this is the best capture card that money can buy right now. It is the better alternative uh, to the El to the Elgato. 4K card, and I've had no issues with it. Um, Elgato uh, customer customer support is great. Um, you know their guide and, and information that they've released on the card is very thorough. So I think this card is amazing, and I highly recommend it. Recommend it, and I think it's definitely you know future proof um, for whatever uh, consoles specifically. Like I said, because you know there are better software for the PC. Uh, on the console side of things, I think it's pretty future-proofed for what um, may be offered, uh, especially in the future generation. So if there is anything I missed out on uh, mentioning or explaining in this very long, thorough, comprehensive review, please ask in the comment section, let me know, and I will do my best to answer it. Like I said, all information um, and links will be in the description. So that's my review of Aver Media's card. All right, I'm out of here, guys. Peace. Please hit the like button to support, and I thank you for watching.